families across the First Coast are challenging their school district's dress code policies, calling the rules sexist and out of date. On Your Science, Leah Shields has been going in depth and sharing how dress code controversies have evolved over the years to become a fight against sexualization of young girls. Sexual objectification is a huge thing. It's really embarrassing and it's really degrading and it's really confusing because all of these clothes are like acceptable like at church. And then having to like put on baggy pants and baggy shirts every day I look at myself and I'm like this I shouldn't have to wear this. School dress code controversies can be traced back to the Supreme Court case Tinker v. Des Moines Independent Community School District. During the Vietnam War, students wore black armbands to school in protest. The school suspended the students and then their parents sued. The Supreme Court favored on the side of the students, saying the armband was not disruptive to their education and was a form of free speech. This is a big deal and it's it's been a problem in our culture for so long. The issues with public school dress codes have shifted since the Me Too era to now fight the sexualization of young girls. I was in gym class, I was wearing sweatpants and a t-shirt that showed about maybe an inch or two of my stomach and a gym teacher told me I can't dress sexy at school. Sloan and Reese Notmeyer point out words suggestive and distracting in Duval County's dress code policy. Kind of teaching us that like our bodies and our skins shouldn't be something we should be comfortable with. The sisters are pushing for modification of the dress code to remove subjective terms and adjust to modern day fashion. Sloan wrote and distributed a report on the topic to her principal and the school board on the reasons why their dress code is problematic. In St. Jones County, words like distracting and modest are used to describe what girls should be wearing to school. There are also measurement requirements for how long a dress or a skirt should be, rules that do not exist for boys in the county. The scope of the dress code policy isn't intended to single out one group, right? Um, I don't dispute that's how the numbers fell out. Public records show 83% of dress code violations in St. John's County schools were for female students this past year. Director for School Services Paul Abitinozzi says he's expecting changes to the policy. They tell men, you know, nothing and they tell us females, you know, cover up. So we have to take responsibility for their actions. Bartram Trail High School sophomore Layla Kazervan took her concerns directly to the school board. My intention is to shed some light on the very serious issue of inequality amongst young women such as myself in St. John's County School District. Dress codes around the country include terms like suggestive, revealing, provocative. Students say if people don't stand up for change, then the only thing forced to change will be their clothes. Leah Shields, First Coast News, on your side.